This episode is brought to you by Strength Portal. You need a single software platform that enables your trainers to deliver consistent, high quality workouts, track client progress, and scale your business. The problem is you're still using pen and paper or basic spreadsheets to run your business, which leads to poor client experiences, inaccurate tracking, and prevents you from growing your business, making you feel frustrated. Strength Portal understand your challenge and have worked closely with the hit industry to create a software platform to manage and scale your niche business. You can integrate with MindBody, manage a standardized exercise and workout library for your team, track workouts effectively, and produce client reports at the click of a button. Strength Portal is used by multiple businesses in the high-intensity strength training community, namely Discover Strength, Smart Strength Austin, Medex Precision Fitness, and more. Starting with Strength Portal is super simple. Number one, sign up for the best package for your business. Number two, let Strength Portal take the load off and help onboard your business onto the platform. And number three, start delivering consistent workout experiences and scale your business to the next level. To help support the podcast, please go to strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business and sign up now so you can stop feeling frustrated about your business and start to scale your business to its true potential. Go to strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business. Lauren Snell here and welcome back to High Intensity Business, the podcast where we discuss high intensity strength training and provide you with tools, tactics, and strategies to help you grow your strength training business. Would you like a free aging and strength training sales presentation to help you convert more clients and grow your business? Of course you would. Please go to highintensitybusiness.com to download that presentation. Today, the topic of this podcast, it's a bit of a draft title and um, maybe it will change on the thumbnail or the actual title for this episode, but I've gone with Why Strength Portal. Um, and I'm with the founder and CEO of Strength Portal, Matt McGonagall. And Strength Portal is a software platform for multi-location gyms to manage their personal training staff and track personal training services. So what I've done for this episode is I kind of looked through feedback I've got from you guys, the listeners, over the years um, in terms of what are the most um, pertinent challenges in your business. And um, we're going to be talking about oh, getting Matt's views on those particular challenges. And I think Strength Portal is, is a, a, a nice solution to a lot of those, and hence the title, Why Strength Portal? Um, we'll see where this one goes, as I'm sure it's, it's, it's also more of a, a, a catch up between Matt and myself and just checking in to see mm-hmm. how things are going. Um, so. The first thing I will say is we're not doing a screen share on this one. This is just a discussion between Matt and myself. But if you do want to see a full demo um, of Strength Portal, then please go to episode 367. And you can find that when you search on highintensitybusiness.com. And that one's called Strength Portal, the ultimate software for your strength training business with Matt McGonagall. And that's where you know he, Matt actually demos the whole platform. And it's amazing. So Matt, um, how are you? Firstly, how are you getting on? Been a while. And doing well. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. How's things with with Strength Portal and uh, you know what? What any news? Any new updates? Any exciting features that are coming up as well? Yeah, actually, good timing. We just released our um, new reports feature, which we call Benchmark Programs and Reports. Um, we've been working on this for a few months, uh, so I'm very excited about it. Um, one of our big goals going into this year was to start to focus on unlocking all the data that we're capturing, all the exercise history that's being built up when trainers track workouts uh, on the platform for their clients. Um, you could always view completed programs, completed sessions in the past. Um, you could kind of uh, we could um, pull in uh, exercise history for a specific exercise into a session to kind of add value to trainers on the floor help them inform their clients like what weights to pick for certain exercises on the spot, which is really cool. Um, But we hadn't quite created a reporting feature that uh, was a really high value addition to the platform yet. So step one for us this year was building the ability for trainers to create custom reports for the clients, um, which is really cool. We released that in spring. We've been getting positive feedback about that good usage on the platform as well. Um, the next extension of that was figuring out a way for the reporting tool to be kind of standardized for 
trainers for studios, but also for multi-location cu customers. And so through a, a bit of an iteration um, on our end, we came up with the term benchmark programs and reports. Um, and uh, we've designed this whole system, which I think is actually really cool. And I can take a moment to uh, uh, touch on that as well. So um, mm -hmm. what we're actually seeing from a lot of our customers, which overlap with your um, membership base in your HIV community as well, is that at personal training studios, they tend to do like test workouts. Maybe once a month, uh, you have a specific workout session, uh, workout program that you'll do month after month to just kind of test strength to uh, say, okay, we're doing these five exercises, you know, same protocol, maybe one set, 10 reps, and you're looking for like weight increase over time um, to just indicate that the client is getting stronger. So uh, the complication from that on the tech, uh, the software side is that within our custom reports, you have the ability to select an exercise, plot their uh, weight increases over time. But what you didn't really have a way to do was filter down all of that data down to that specific workout that you're doing for the test workout month after month. So if you're doing like a machine chest press, for example, maybe you track that four to five times a month, for example, but all you were really looking for month after month was that one test workout exercise that was tracked. So um, we came up, came up with a system that I think is pretty cool, where we've created a new type of program. And uh, with the, within this program, when you track it, what it does, it essentially adds another field to the exercise when it's tracked that allows us to filter out that exercise history compared to all the other exercises that are being tracked. So the end result is that if you're a trainer on the floor, um, your team has created a benchmark program. You're going to use that benchmark program once a month. And then when you go to the reporting feature, you can filter down, say, I want to create a report off of this program specifically for this client. And then it's going to take those exercises and have really nice charts that show progress over time, um, specific for that client's exercise history for those test workouts. So uh, we just did kind of like a soft launch yesterday for it. Uh, we're going to be setting up some of our uh, pilot uh, customers uh, with it over the next week or so, and then starting to do some marketing around it. Um, but I'm really, really excited about it because it's taken a, a lot of kind of blood, sweat, and tears to, to get it, uh, to be able to focus to get to this point. It was kind of a dream feature for me for like four to five years to be able to get to, but we had to do a bunch of foundational work to, to get to this point. So um, I'm really excited about it. And probably the reason that I care about it so much is that I think one of the biggest challenges in the industry, you know, that is continually talked about from all uh, owners and operators and trainers on the floor is just worrying about client retention. And you work so hard to get a client in the gym uh, and then you work, put all your time and energy into the workouts to give them the best experience possible. And then maybe four to six weeks later, you're trying to resell them on the next training package. So the, the uh, target outcome behind all this work for reports is that now you'll have easy tools within our platform where if you go through your normal process for programming and tracking, at the end of it, you can create really clean, easy, beautiful reports that you can share with your client in those, uh, in those moments to help uh, convert them and retain the clients and get those ne the next training package sold. So for us, like we think of it as really like a, a tool that will help uh, with client retention and help grow your business that way, kind of the the end um, the end goal for us. So yeah, um, uh, I'd, I've been so busy the last like week plus, I didn't even think about that going into this meeting, but we just did that yesterday. So really <laughs> I think that's a, a mic drop moment. To be honest, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> is this is that that feature you're just talking about in terms of being able to show the progress and the strength the strength tests and ha adding the extra field, etc. Is that what? Because I know um, Bryce and Skylar were screaming about something they wanted added, and uh, they are they are super users. Um, yes. And was this what they were referring to, or are they, yeah, my fingers so, yeah, yeah, Skylar, Skylar Taylor, Bryce, Bryce Lee, uh, some. Uh, a good friends of yours and also of mine, really long, uh, long-term customers of Strength Portal. This is exactly what they've been uh, advocating for. And we've just been trying to get the time to be able to focus on it. So 
Uh, yep. Uh, this is kind of, and I think the best way to think of it is like, so it's a soft launch. This is a V1. And really what it does is that it's going to add enough value for some of our most active and largest customers to be able to pull value from it right away. But also it's a really nice foundation to be built on top of because there's a lot of different uh, uh, ways to um, pull in data to uh, continue to add more value to it. It's a nice uh, foundation where we can really build a lot of um, cool additions on top of. So uh, already getting some feedback from uh, from those two um, when they've been uh, going through like um, uh, demos or examples over the last like months or two that are really cool and exciting. Um, there's so much we can do with it. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to like the future iterations of it as well. Cool. And just while I remember, because um, uh, Blair is is part of that same conversation as well, Blair mm-hmm. Wilson. And I did some content in the membership with Blair recently on uh, Evolution uh, Medics Precision Fitness I've been going through in terms of their um, pricing and packaging, which is fascinating and been finding that very useful for myself or our studio as well. Um, and we mentioned you guys, and he said that lots of very nice things about you and the company, but he said that you have the best customer service or something along those lines um, ever. So he's been very impressed with you know that side of it and you being so involved and uh, you know, being great at listening to the customers and responding to their needs. So that's great. And that was, that was great for me to hear that too. So that's uh, that, that always uh, uh, fills me with warm feelings. So I appreciate hearing that. <laughs> Absolutely. So look, um, basically that's the end of the podcast because you answered all my questions. No, I'm kidding. But you did actually <laughs> answer. I, I had a lot of bullets about progress reports and things. Um, and a couple of things just highlight from what you said. You know, I I think... And I was recently going through, so Luke Carson put this amazing course together during the pandemic. I think it's called How to Build the the Million Dollar Training Gym. Great course. Um, If people are interested in that course, you can find it over on the products page on High Intensity Business. And, you know, in in that course, he talks about uh, client, client retention and growing the business and the importance of sharing progress, not only long-term but short-term as well and so having listened to that implemented it right away in our systems and made sure that you know every workout we're saying hey you know what you did you know 100 pounds for nine reps on the pull down last workout you just did Mm -hmm. you know 10 reps 100 pounds or 12 reps or whatever Um, or even if there was no change in performance in terms of weight or reps it's like you know what you perform you did the same reps in the same weight but your form was like 10 times better right you did a great job keeping your shoulders down on the chest press whatever it is that's really important and it's equally important doing it long term as you've been saying in terms of producing you know doing a a marker workout or strength test um, and then being able to use a tool like strength portal to actually track that effectively and then show that compare in an easy report Um, But I like what you said about how easy it is for the trainer to now give a short-term overview as well. So they can quickly bring it up on the the software and see what they did last time or what they did. Maybe, is it, is it, how granular is that feature? Is it, oh, I can see what they did last time or is it, oh, I can actually see what they did the last three times very quickly and, and, and be able to talk about that and give commentary on that? In the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a few different ways that we pull in data across the platform. So um, we think of it in terms of uh, like user experience, like whether you're on the floor or whether you're kind of like analyzing uh, the reporting, maybe in a non training session. So uh, I can touch on like the really um, uh, short term context that's really helpful is like when you're on the floor and you're tracking a workout and you tap on an exercise and you're using a tablet, for example, uh, we actually pull in exercise history that helps the trainer inform the client for what exercise uh, weight range would be helpful for them based off their last few sessions, but also like their historical rep maxes over a variety of rep ranges. So if I have, you know, ch- uh, machine chest press, for example, for that client, I built up an exercise history on the floor. I can easily view that with one tap. And that's going to help me like, okay, like typically this client is kind of within like this weight range. They're feeling good today. Maybe let's push a little bit further. Okay. Um, so that's, that's one, one part right there where we're on the floor. Uh, that's very specific. 
for the reporting feature that I'm referring to, this is more of a off the floor action. Um, whether the trader is just wants to kind of analyze the data to help inform maybe their next workout program they're going to write for the client or for maybe um, creating a report to uh, show data or to send the data to a client um, so they can view on their own to just help motivate them to buy the next training package. Uh, so for the reporting feature, there's two different paths. You can you know do with the custom flow you can pull in whatever data you want. You can select like the desired time frame for that uh, ex those exercises for that client, and it's really easy to manipulate. Uh, obviously, that's a, a bit more manual, and the reason that's custom with manual is that there's so many different ways that you can go with it. We want to be able to support that flexibility. For the benchmark program uh, and reports specifically, um, that is going to be pulling in the full exercise history for that client with those exercises that have been added to that flag. Uh, and it's actually kind of funny that you mentioned Luke because one of the pilot customers that we're working on setting this up with, with is with Luke and the Discover Strike team. Um, and they were a good, a big inspiration for this feature because obviously, you know, it's a main focus, big focus for them to demonstrate that value, show reports over time. Um, so what we're actually doing literally as we speak today with our team um, is we're loading in uh, their clients historical uh, data from uh, being imported from spreadsheets that they have that data goes back to like five or six years oh my god so so much data so, yeah. yeah it's 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 a couple thousand customers i think <laughs> thousands of data points um and it's it's uh it's coming in from like google spreadsheets Oh wow! Uh, so basically, we basically we wrote a script that um, just says, "Hey, based off like this program structure, you know, there's a, a good amount of consistency, which is pretty rare within those spreadsheets that we can work off of. Um, it's not perfect, but like let's just say we're able to import seventy to eighty percent of the data cleanly. Um, that means that the Discover Strength trainers next week, when they use this feature for the first time, pull in the um the benchmark uh, report for a client they'll be able to view these uh these charts that are exactly the same as they had in these spreadsheets that they were like kind of like a um, not an easy workflow to to go through in a separate system uh that they've been doing for the last five or six years now it's all in the same system they're using with their clients on the floor every single day just a few clicks away um so yeah it's uh uh, that's the kind of like the full summary of the different areas we pull in that data into the platform where we think it's like, you know, very contextual uh, to try to uh, pull in the right data at the right time to help the trader uh, add value to the client uh, uh, and just improve the, the trading experience. Um, so that it's very, uh, there's a, um, a lot of um, thought and it's very specific intent behind uh, how we pull in that data across the platform. Yeah, awesome. No, it sounds great. Um, and I wanted to, I guess, kick off with some of the, some of the points here, which are, are collected through, I guess, just looking at you know some of the challenges that my listeners have and and um, things that have come up. Um, first question I had was a bit of a random one, really, regarding retention, client retention. Am I right in thinking that this isn't something that's probably aligned with Strength Portal? Strength Portal is more the workout tracking and actually client retention is still something that will probably end up focusing on something like MindBody. Um, our scheduling payment software might be better for that. Is that correct? I just wanted to check that with you. Yeah. So uh, it's a really interesting question because we do have data that is valuable for companies that are doing kind of a retention equation. Mm -hmm. The most specific data is always going to be in like your billing and scheduling system, whether you're using something like my body or Mariana tech or, um, other, or like, you know, if you just have your own billing, uh, billing set up with like PayPal or Stripe. Um, but it is a goal of us to continually kind of work towards like getting that retention information, pulling those specific data points into our platform. Cause we do have integrations like using my body, for example, we have access to all the client data. And we have a really rich client profile on our end with like all the training and activity data. And we want to kind of work towards marrying that with um, that financial information that uh, uh, paints the whole picture. 
So long term, there's kind of two different ways that we will be able to kind of discuss going about it is either we're pushing information over to another platform like MindBody and you can view it in your client profile or we're pulling that data over into our system and representing it in some way in ours. Um, so we haven't got to the point where, you know, we hadn't necessarily have a clear path and it's mostly just due to the, um, limitations that integrations have, uh, and also just, uh, you know, higher priorities getting like foundational stuff always in place on our end. We tend to focus on like customer value add, like day, you know, immediately rather than like long-term all the time. So we try to do a split. But it is a very interesting question for us to work towards. Um, so uh, what we're very aware of is that, you know, obviously it's one of the most important metrics that a business owner, um, you know, cares about uh, for good reason. And we hope to be able to continue to uh, work towards making it easier and easier to analyze that data in our platform uh, with all the, the rich uh, data that's being built up as our cu customers use the platform. I guess, yeah, I mean, this is something that I know you know a ton about, and that's this whole idea of like feature creep, right? And mm -hmm. I just finished reading a great book, which I'm going to plug now because it's amazing, um, called Systemology, and it's all about systems. I don't know if you're familiar with that book, Matt, um, mm -hmm. written by an Australian guy called Dave, David Jennings, but it's got great, great reviews, very popular and as the name suggests, it's all about how do you write and implement systems in your business so you can scale your business and step back from, away from your business and all this kind of thing. And I've been looking for more resources on systems and I, because I feel like the book Traction, which is a very popular book in, I guess, in business, but in our space, and in terms of like having a strategy and a, and, a, and a framework for managing your business, the systems part of that book is very light. And so I think this really helps with that. Um why am I talking about this, Matt? Why did I bring up systemology in the first right. place? Fe That's feature, right, feature, feature creep. creep. What a tangent that was. Um, yes. <laughs> so, so in this book, they were saying about, you know, um, when you're thinking about software for anything, but in, in, in the context of the book, it's talking about when you're thinking about project management software or systems management software, you want to be careful of investing in software that is trying to do too much. Sometimes it's better mm -hmm. to have point solution software and have, have, have multiple products. Um, and uh, yeah, and if you have something that's trying to do everything normally, well, typically it can be qu quite weak at the things that are really important and the, the, yeah. the things that you are really looking to, to acquire when you invested in this software um, or use. And I'd love to hear how you think about that, right? Because because I I'm very comfortable when clients say to me, "Oh, uh, are you guys going to get some like cardio or some spin bikes or something in here?" And I'm like, "No, we just do tailored strength training. We're never going to do any of that stuff. If you want to go do that stuff, go and do it somewhere else." Obviously, I'm much more diplomatic than that. And nice, um, and and it's the same for nutrition. Like we 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 do an education, but we don't sell like coaching and services around that. I mean, very deliberate choice. Slightly different to software, I know, but um, it's the similar concept, right? And like staying in your lane. And so if you said to me, no, Lawrence, we're never going to provide any metrics or anything about retention because that's not our strength or not what we're focused on, I'd be like, fine. So how do you think about that? And where where is your demarcation? Where are the things where you're like, you know, we're, we're not going to get involved in those particular needs because it's not our like strength or our uh, strategic focus? Yeah, it's um, probably to just use like some phrases or terms that just kind of like stick with me whenever I, um, you know, uh, run into situations like this, like from a software perspective, like, you know, it's really easy to become a, a jack of all trades, but like a master of none. Mm. Um, so like, and from a business owner and operator perspective, especially with software is that you have the opportunity to go so many different paths. And like, there's always the temptation of like wanting to build into a new direction, especially when you get someone who comes into your platform really excited about using it. Um, and like, oh, like, but if only you had like these two to three things, or, or are you going to be doing this? Uh, it's one of the most like challenging things um, from like a, a, a product uh, design and decision standpoint. Uh, you like from a, even a human standpoint, you want to help satisfy those needs yeah. because you care about it. Like potential and customers. software so malleable too, right? Which makes yeah. it even more tempting, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Um, and what definitely helps is like, you know, 
either as as with any business, like you're very aware of your constraints and especially just kind of building experience with building software. I've been doing this for, oh, uh, let's see, almost like eight or nine years now. Um, so since like I graduated college, like with different, you know, platforms or uh, back when I did freelance or so many different ways is you just kind of like learn that um, from a software perspective, it's really important to build with the intention of thinking about like the long term. It's not only like a value add for your customers, but it's also for like maintenance and the ability, ability to be able to continually support this. Um, as a software as a service company, um, you know, you you are going to live with that software, that feature forever. Um, you know, if you, you build it potentially. Uh, it's really hard to like remove something once you've added it. So you have to be very intentional about mm. it. Um, and it's a very different mindset from like, um, if you work with like a, a software studio, uh, and this is something like, there's probably good examples in your your customer base who have wanted to build like things custom for themselves, their own, their own needs. And people in companies who have invested literally thousands or millions of dollars into like building custom platforms. When you start working with the software studio, like you're like, oh, we can build anything. Um, and the, the the important part of that conversation that's really lost is, okay, so after it's delivered, you know, what does the maintenance and support really look like? And is this built in, in a way that's going to be flexible enough to be able to support my future needs for maybe we thought it was going to be going this one direction, but actually it's really way over here. Um, and I've been through a lot of those cycles, like so many different times. We actually experienced it firsthand in the first version of Spring Form. Yeah. Uh, when we built it up in 2013, 2014, we were building more of a independent personal trainer, online training focus. Um, and we just kind of kept on building like new features into it. And the software wasn't very, wasn't meeting our customers kind of core needs in the first place. We added all these features. We added like, um, you know, stuff that would be have been important in the long term, like messaging and like, you know, a strong mobile app. And we looked into adding like macro tracking back in like 2014. Um, but the platform like wasn't uh, quality enough where that a trainer could just track a workout on the floor, which is really just what they needed, uh, <laughs> which seems really simple. But we were building like all these kind of like crazy advanced things. And it just like, it, you know, to put us in a position where like, like, oh, wow, now we have like what we call bloatware, where there's so many different things like that we need to like improve and make better and maintain and support, but we can't actually like get to focus on just like adding value to our customers. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. This episode is brought to you by Strength Portal. You need a software platform that enables you to track workouts deliver consistent high-quality client experiences, and scale your business. The problem is you're still using pen and paper or basic spreadsheets to run your business, which leads to inconsistent workout experiences and stifles your business growth, making you feel frustrated. Strength Portal to have worked closely with the hit industry to create a software platform to manage and scale your niche business. Strength Portal is used by multiple businesses in the high intensity strength training community, namely Discover Strength, Smart Strength Austin, Medex Precision Fitness, and more. To help support the podcast, go to strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business and sign up for your ideal package now. That's strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business. And now back to the episode. So this is a that's a um, really key key thing. Sorry, just to highlight something yeah. you said there. People don't realize, and I think this is this is important for the listeners. As an owner, whenever you add a feature, there's a management overhead, there's an upfront yeah. cost, and there's a management overhead, and there's an investment overhead. You know, you have to think about, right? If you're going to yeah. provide an additional service, so this applies to your your domain, obviously, and, and ours. You know, you have to think, okay, well, what, what do we need to invest in on a continuous basis to make sure that we are yeah. on top of nutrition? And then what, yeah. okay, what packages we need to provide? Who's going to support those? What additional resources yeah. do we need to offer? You know, it's a, it's a minefield. Um, and and right, before you know it, that, you have no focus, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, you know, and I'm just going to tack on to that. It's like, you know, it's not only just like the maintenance support, like you're committing resources, but it's the opportunity cost, right? Yes. So yeah, and that's that's the the long term extension of that is that 
when you commit those resources, it's very hard to pull them off something else is like, hey, say you get a massive opportunity, um, you know, but you already have like your commitment and direction in this. If you don't have the resources to be able to like engage with that new opportunity or that might be a better fit for your core value, um, that's a lost opportunity. So yeah. like with the way that we kind of think about it is that um, we've focused on in-person training. Uh, we serve personal training studios and multi-location companies um, up to, um, you know, franchise franchises, but also big box gym chains. So whether it's one, five, 15, or 100 plus locations, if you do one-on-one -on -one private training tracking on the floor, we're going to be focusing on you. But we get asked all the time if we're going to be pulled into more of like the online training uh, focus uh, for like single trainers where there's so much like a yeah. completely different, um, you know, a set of needs. But also even for like, you know, these uh, big box gym chains or personal training studios, we get asked for a lot of things similar to like, you know, what about nutrition? Um, you know, like, have, have you thought about building that? It's stand simple. Uh, so why don't you, you <laughs> build into it? <laughs> um, and for us, like, you know, like if we like went down one of those paths, for example, we committed our engineering resources to that. Um, let's say if we got like a massive, you know, customer prospect that just needed our core platform, but we didn't have the flexibility or time to like just completely commit to that and get like a nice integration, focus on their needs. That's a huge missed opportunity for us just yeah. because we didn't stay lean and mean and we couldn't focus on that, which was the right fit for us. So um, to kind of play this whole thing through, like the last thing I was going to uh, go beyond, um, you know, like jack of all trades, master of none the what you learn over time and like what you really start to embrace and i think uh overlaps with a lot of your uh, uh membership uh and uh, community that you built at the hib is that riches and niches is a huge and very like just a it's a truth like it, the, there's so much opportunity out there um from like an economic standpoint is that if you are able to provide like a very clear focus whether it's in like your local community or from a software perspective, even on like a global scale, we have a little bit more like reach or opportunity with that. It really pays to specialize and do something well. Um, and, you know, at, here, here. at some point, yeah, at some point in the future, you may have enough flexibility or opportunity to be able to kind of like land and expand. But um, it, only very rarely does it make sense to kind of like if something's not working, with the company does it make sense to completely like shift and pull all of your energy direction somewhere else but if you have enough where you're growing a, uh growing a sustainable business and delivering like a very clear value to your customers continuing to focus on that for the long term like just compounds and that's something that we've seen play out for us um so and that that just kind of takes time and a few uh a few uh scars to kind of learn as a yeah. business owner so I I a hundred percent agree, and I'm so glad to hear you say that. And this is why I love talking to you, and I love working with you guys because I like promoting you because you've got great products, but you've also got a great mindset in your team, the way you think. And I love the fact that you said that, and that's just music to my ears. It's it's so important um, to stay focused. And it's by the way, Paddy Durrell. Whenever someone says uh, the riches are in the niches. That's right, isn't it? I always think of you because she said it and they just stuck with oh, me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. amazing. I, I love Patty. Oh, you know Patty. Oh, okay, I didn't realize yeah. that. Um, hopefully you should listen to this and find that amusing. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's no, no true words have been spoken, uh, spoken, sorry. Um, and it got you got me thinking like this is so this can be analogized in so many ways. You know, I'm thinking right now in terms of our studio, I'm thinking about marketing strategy going into Q4 and I'm thinking about the initiatives we'll focus on. And I had one of my members of our team uh, focusing on a number of different marketing initiatives, Facebook, stuff like that. And I just thought, whoa, 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 whoa. Like we've got to remember that every time we pick one of these things, there's an enormous management overhead, which we just talked about, which I'm not factoring in and how this is going to eat into other activities that are of greater importance. Yeah. And so I was like, we need to take a big step back really decide exactly what marketing we're going to do going into the next quarter based on our avatar and such. 
um, and and be very aware of how that is going to consume resources that could be put into a great customer experience or operation, right? Like we're a pretty small business. We have finite resources. So we've got to be really mindful about that. And you've just got me thinking about that even more, which is really useful. So um, one question I want to ask you, and I guess this will probably be our, our last point of discussion because I'm sure it will open a massive can of worms. But you, you've been working in our, I think, my listeners will find this interesting. Like you've been working in our niche for a long while now, and you've been working very closely with Discover Strength and uh, and obviously uh, Strength Space and Smart Strength and Medex Precision Fitness and more, I'm sure. Um, so there's no other software provider who has a better understanding of high intensity training, personal training than you do. Um, and you're, as you've been saying during this whole podcast, you've really focused your product on delivering value to us which is amazing um and i'd love to learn what have you learned about our niche and what's that trans what's that um what's it how did i word the question i had this sort of pre-plan how has that affected what's the best way to use our software and how your software and how has it affected the 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 the, your product as you've learned more and more about our particular niche i think that's the question here is i'm I'm curious to know how it's changed the the software as you've learned more about more about us yes it's such a good question because like for me just in having you know my uh, you know my hands are all over the the product direction for like where we're going to be focusing focusing where we're building and a lot of, if you look at like the history of strength portal, it really reflects like my personal fitness journey. And I think that's worth just kind of touching on like a little bit. So like my brother and I got really into like strength and fitness in high school. We were like athletes, you know, that was a, an idea. But as we kind of started to transition away from like caring all like hundred percent of just about sports into uh, going to college and be like, oh, we're not going to be professional athletes, you know, like, oh, strength and fitness is really fun. Uh, where we kind of first like landed was a little bit more of like a powerlifting uh, focus. Um, similar journey to like probably a lot of like uh, fitness professionals is like they get interested in strength and fitness. They like, whoa, it's even maybe you go down the hypertrophy or like the strength like rabbit hole. You do that for a few years and then you're like, eventually you kind of like, like, oh, wait, you know, like it doesn't need to be just like all about doing like one one rep max or like three rep max or, or like for these three exercises there's a whole world of fitness uh that's um like that's available and there's a lot of value like in other different approaches to it so for me i pretty much very much went down that um that path um if you look at the first versions of strength portal and even like has like some things that still kind of exist to this day you'll see little influences for that where like we uh, had a field for like RPE, rate of perceived attrition, which are like super common in powerlifting uh, programming for years, you know, and still is, um, or like tempo or uh, stuff like that. So, um, and even for like the exercise library, there's a lot of kind of like powerlifting influences like in there. Um, so for me, like what I needed to, to learn and how it influenced Strength Portal was that when you get in uh, motivated by a certain like fitness uh, philosophy is, you know, it's really easy to think like, Hey, this is like the only thing that really matters. No, um, we're not doing uh, that at all. <laughs> yeah. And like in, in, in over time, you're like, Whoa, like, okay. Like there's a lot of different approaches that have value. Um, and you know, like it, it doesn't just have to be one way, you know, and until you uh, find high intensity that, training, then you realize it is the only way. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, and, and so, and here's what, here's what I'm driving <laughs> towards is that like, eventually, you, you know, like you kind of learn from fitness professionals in this space, like, wow, like, you know, the actual problem is like, it's not that there's like one fitness block, like, you know, approach that like, you know, um, is like the best way. The biggest problem, like, you know, and that's like, it's the, the lack of education that's really preventing people from hitting their fitness goals for that. It's more that it's a motivational issue to get people in the gym in the first place. Um, and mm. to like have them like fall in love with fitness and uh, carrying that forward, especially as become, you know, I go from my later 20s to early 30s. I'm about to be a father for the first time. I'm oh, yeah. Raising, raising a family. And like, you start to get like constraints. 
And um, what you start to learn and really appreciate is efficiency. So <laughs> what I've been learning over like the last few years, especially from the high intensity strength uh, um, like community is that um, I am continually kind of falling in love with the business model and the fitness philosophy and the programming approach that a lot of your community is putting together. And I'm really seeing the value of, I've always believed in strength. Um, I've always believed in hypertrophy, but you know, like it doesn't need, like there's an 80, 20 kind of like, uh, like aspect that, you know, if you go past a certain point, um, you know, maybe it's not, it's going to take away from other areas of your life. Uh, and in my early twenties, I was able to commit to like, you know, really caring about powerlifting and like go deep in like some interest I had, but later on in life, you know, you're, it doesn't make sense to do things like that. And you need to do things in a more efficient manner to be able to get like maintain or to build strength and uh, muscle up to a certain point. So for me, uh, the way that's really influenced strength portal a huge amount is just kind of continually growing to love and appreciate uh, and embrace like uh, strength from an efficiency standpoint, uh, learning that, wow, like, you know, it's not just about barbells or kettlebells and like machines actually have like, an insane amount of value. So I, uh, that's where I'm I just, I needed to be exposed to that. You know, it, it was a blind spot for me. Uh, I also needed to probably grow like as a human, as a person to like, you know, appreciate that stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, 10 years ago, like to now I have a completely different mindset uh, that I did previously. So there is a lot of, um, uh, influence in the fitness philosophy that your community has that's being put into our platform and actually the benchmark programs and reports is a perfect example yeah. of that, you know, like that's, that's coming from, that's coming from, you know, our most active customers that are the personal training studios that are high intensity focused. That's uh, in, um, a directly from them. It's not from, you know, online personal trainers focusing on uh, strength or, you know, uh, bodybuilding or, you know, anything like that. So, um, yeah, hopefully that wasn't too, uh, you know, that, that kind of, that story made a, a, a little bit of sense. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it wasn't answering my question, but I prefer it, uh, because I, I, I love hearing how this is, well, it's fascinating to hear how this has influenced you. And I promise you, Matt, this is your solution to avoiding the dad bod, right? Once you're a dad, <laughs> You're, you you know you're already super busy you're ceo of a software company once you have a kid you need to figure out the most efficient effective fitness yeah. solutions to keep to keep in shape so hopefully this will it's, do did discover strength force you to do a workout every now and again or <laughs> yeah yeah i uh we went to the rec comp uh the yeah, yeah. Uh, resistance exercise conference in uh in march and uh even though with the time difference it was like four in the morning for us uh, we got up, we did the workout, we were there, uh, and uh, we had a, a good time. And, and it really actually did help, uh, you know, it just kind of some more um, like wheels in my head just kind of like click into place. Yeah. So um, yeah. after after doing those those workouts and just kind of like thinking about it further and them looking at like signs or different kind of like uh, conversations we're having with different customers or opportunities across the space. I really do think like the, the market is going to be shifting like in this community's favor over the next three to five years. Like there's a kind of like a growing awareness of this mm. type of training. Um, so Funny, I'm really so. excited. I, I, I'm really excited about it. I, uh, I think we're all in kind of like the right place at the right time. Um, but you know, even just like breaking it down to something very specific after I did like the discover strength workout, uh, I was like, man, like I wish my parents in Sonoma had, mm -hmm. you know, just like a gym, just like this, they could go to because they're uh, blue collar, you know, have their own business, very, very active, but they're starting to get up there, you know, reaching like 60, uh, uh, right around 60 in age. And you're like, man, like, you know, It'd be great if they could just have like a 30 minute, you know, efficient strength based machine uh, workout, a you know, machine based focused workout to go through. That would be perfect for them. And they would get so many uh, returns from it. So for me, I even, you know, see the value on a personal level beyond myself from like just thinking about family. Mm. So uh, I am I'm very excited about the opportunity.
opportunity for that because um yeah i just think there's there's so much opportunity in this niche to be, still be unlocked to, to kind of yeah all together. Uh, yeah i mean you know it's funny um basically you guys everyone else copies america right america leads the way on like everything and and it's like you're like five to 10 years ahead of everyone else. Like I remember when I came over to rec in 2018, when I say everyone else, I guess maybe I'm, I'm, I'm excluding some of the countries in the East who, who might not follow America so much, but I mean, maybe they do. I don't know. Anyway, side note. So uh, when I came over to rec in 2018, I remember sitting in a, a bar getting some, getting a pizza or something. We just landed. We were, it, we, we, were we were waiting to get a, a connection flight to another airport. I think we're in Chicago or something. And um, uh, I, I just remember looking around, looking at the all the people walking around. They all had AirPods, right, like I've got right now. And no one had AirPods in Ireland. Like I was like the only one who had them or I was about to get them. I can't quite remember. And it was just mad to me. I was like, wow, this is like everywhere here. And it was just an example of how far ahead technology is and how we all have to sort of play catch up. Um so where I'm going with that is as it relates to the popularity of strength training, it seems to me, and maybe I'm just biased, but it seems to me that there's a more of a push for the public to be engaging in strength training in the US. Certainly seems to be that the medical community are a little bit more in favor of that. I mean, obviously, that's perhaps evidenced by the great growth I am seeing in a lot of strength training studios um, as well. Um, but I am noticing it here as well. You know, it's 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 if once you speak to the right individual, and and frankly, the person who this really resonates with, as you as you probably know, is someone who is, um, you know, very time poor and typically relatively high income, um, typically female, funnily enough, um, and they once they try it. And you have that that per that right person. They are they're just like it's a no brainer investment for them. It's incredibly time efficient. Um, I mean, we're talking someone who's super busy here. You know, got kids at home, has perhaps gone out of shape because they weren't able to sustain the three or four exercise classes they were doing every single week, so they just gave up because they didn't realize there was a ideal alternative right around the corner. So mm. yeah. Um, I, I'm seeing that trend and I'm I'm certainly hoping that it continues and uh and I think you guys need to uh need to continue doing the good work you're doing over in the States from a strength training point of view and then hopefully it continues to trickle down into Europe <laughs> as everything else does. So awesome. Um Matt, thanks so much for for doing this again. Great to see you. And I just also want to mention to the listeners. You know, we've talked about a bunch of stuff today and we've touched on things like trainer retention. If you really want to learn more about Matt's views on how to help with how to attract and retain great trainers. And we did another podcast together, episode 375, how to set up new personal trainer hires for success, um, where Matt also talks about how strength portal can play a role in that as well. Um, Matt, any final thoughts? Great to catch up today. Yeah, no, this was uh, a lot of fun to uh, to spend some time kind of discussing and, and um, no no real thoughts. I'm just excited and looking forward to continuing to engage with new members of your community. So I always appreciate the time and uh, thank you for all the work you put into this. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. And uh, yeah, if anyone who's interested, go to strengthportal.com. That's the right URL, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah great to find out more about the platform um, and to find a blog post for this episode please go to highintensitybusiness.com search your episode 384 i believe that's right and uh, and until next time thank you very much for listening This episode is brought to you by Strength Portal. You need a single software platform that enables your trainers to deliver consistent high quality workouts, track client progress and scale your business. The problem is you're still using pen and paper or basic spreadsheets to run your business, which leads to poor client experiences, inaccurate tracking and prevents you from growing your business, making you feel frustrated. Strength Portal understand your challenge and have worked closely with the hit industry to create a software platform to manage and scale your niche business. 
You can integrate with MindBody, manage a standardized exercise and workout library for your team, track workouts effectively, and reduce client reports at the click of a button. Strength Portal is used by multiple businesses in the high intensity strength training community, namely Discover Strength, Smart Strength Austin, Medex Precision Fitness, and more. Starting with Strength Portal is super simple. Number one, sign up for the best package for your business. Number two, let Strength Portal take the load off and help onboard your business onto the platform. And number three, start delivering consistent workout experiences and scale your business to the next level. To help support the podcast, please go to strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business and sign up now so you can stop feeling frustrated about your business and start to scale your business to its true potential. Go to strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business. Let's go. Let's go.